So now for the question that's been on my mind and perhaps yours is, was all of this effort really worth it? I went through the Epiphone's website and I took a cup, I made this chart of kind of features of the guitars and price differentials and things like that. Part of my, I guess, engineered analysis kind of thing. Um, but first up on here, we're going to talk about the Special 2. Now, the Special 2 was originally the guitar that I bought for the purpose of this guitar, which is playing half a step down, kind of 90s grunge rock stuff. And um, I originally bought it for $60, which was an awesome deal. Um, currently, that these that guitar is li listing at $220. Um, used, you can pick it up for about $125. But there are some disadvantages to that guitar, mostly that it didn't have the individual volume and tone controls. The second thing I wasn't too impressed with was uh, the pickups that came with that guitar were just very hot ceramic pickups, something that I didn't quite like. Um, on the Epiphone Special 2, it's got a bolt on neck, and it just has a slab top, which is something I have on a lot of guitars. Not really a, a problem for me. Didn't have any binding on the neck or the body. Dot inlays, like I mentioned, that slab top. Just kind of, you know, you paint it black. There, there can't be much more finish to that. Doesn't have covered pickups, doesn't have a pick guard. Just kind of your blank, plain Jane um, starting guitar. And so for that purpose, it would have worked well. But I kind of like to set sometimes an individual uh setting for each pickup tone and volume wise for a certain song so that i can play it the way that i feel it should be played and i wasn't able to do that with that guitar so i started looking for something else and um this guitar be kind of w felt like it was going to fill that void so th the next one we have in the current lineup is the studio e1 which is a little bit different. Uh, first of all, you do get those two individual tone and volume knobs, but not much different. I think the Studio E1, you do get a carved mahogany top on it. So it does have that carved um, top profile, but not much else is different from the Special 2. Let me just look at my... Yeah, so we have those hot ceramic pickups, a bolt on neck, um, you know, it's just not a lot much more there. And that guitar costs about, uh, $50 more. So may, I'm, I'm guessing a used price on that might be about 225, which is, seems like kind of a bit for a guitar that you're not going to be playing very much. And then we're going to go to the, um, Les Paul 100, which is, um, obviously this guitar in its stock form was called the Les Paul Studio. Looks like they built an intermediate model, which is called the Studio E1 now. So they're calling the the current model the Les Paul 100 E1. Um, again, it's got those hot ceramic pickups. We do have the individual volume and told controls, but we start to get kind of a little bit more. We've got the the uh, the the cream pick guard. We've got some knobs that look okay. We've got this, the toggle switch selector plate is in a different color. So we're starting to get it looking a little bit more like a standard Les Paul. Other advantage, it's got the carved mahogany top, but really not a lot more advantages other than just prettying it up a little bit. Then we get into uh, the more serious guitars. And the, the next costliest guitar Sorry, the Les Paul 100 is um, retailing for $300 right now. So the next um, kind of guitar, the next um, price jump up, now we're going at retailing for $500 is the classic Warren. And um, here we're getting into kind of the guitars that you would more have more serious, you play it more seriously. And, and the features kind of show. Um, with that, we have the Al Alnico Pro pickups. Of course, it's got the dual volume and tone controls, one for each pickup. And now we're getting into the set neck versus the bolt-on neck. For me, and it was, a, it was kind of important for me to have that bolt-on neck, so if my kids were to knock 
my guitar over and the, or I would just do something stupid and leave it out and break the headstock off. You know, I, I think I saw on Amazon, there was a special running for 40 bucks for a neck. Um, just, just basically the neck and the fretboard and you had to add the tuners and everything. So, you know, getting a situation like that, you don't have to get too upset. It's just a small investment to get that guitar back up and running again, especially if you put a lot of investment into this end. So again, we got um, the Alnico Pro pickups on that classic worn and set neck. But now we're getting into um, starting to get things like the neck and the body binding. So that neck's going to play a little more comfortable and you have a little more protection on the edge of the guitar. If you were to knock it against something, it might not ding it quite as much. Just looks a little bit better. But the main difference is that you're now going to get those Alnico Pro pickups. Those are the same pickups that I put in this guitar, buying a set for 50 bucks or so on eBay. And so the, this is kind of what I've turned this guitar as a hybrid of the Classic and the um, 100. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. So the next step up is a Studio. Now the studio, it was supposed to be basically the same thing as a standard acoustically, but appearance wise, it's kind of like you're playing Jane. So by the time you're talking the studio, you've got Alnico Pro pickups, you got the set neck, um, you don't have the body and the neck binding, but you're starting to get the block inlays, uh, which is another thing that the classic worn has. Again, with the classic worn in the studio, now we're getting into a carved maple top. That maple's going to make the guitar a little bit brighter. Also, um, the more budget models with the bolt-on necks have a smaller thickness to them. And so you're looking at maybe the standard thickness as you jump up to um, the studio or the classic worn. Um, and now we're, we're you know, we've got to pick up... An, but, with a studio now, we're starting to get covered pickups, which is a look that I really like. I really can't stand that he could spend, you know, almost $2,000 on a Gibson and not even get the covered pickups on it. I think that's a little ridiculous. You almost have to buy the standards to get the covered pickups these days. It's a look that I really like, which was one of the reasons that I opted to get these Alnico Pro pickups from uh, eBay to, to toss in this guitar. Then we're going to jump up to the classic. Sorry, the studio runs about $550. I've seen those go on the used market and even at Guitar Center for about $300, which I think is a really good deal for a guitar like that if you want to really get into something that you could enjoy looking at and playing. Then we jump up to the classic, and we still don't get those covered pickups but you've got the binding and almost everything that you would want in a, in a Les Paul, in a class, uh, and what you would think of as a traditional Les Paul. And then jumping up to uh, the standard, sorry, the classic costing $600, it's $50 more than the studio. Uh, then you jump up to the standard at $700 retail, now you're getting some nicer pickups. You're getting into the Pro Buckers. You um, still have the carb maple top. You're going to get a better top. Um, you can start to go into the flame maple stuff instead of just a plain top. Um, and as we jump up to the next level, we're talking about one of the ultimate things, the, the 1959 standard. Um, and that's $1,000. It's going to come with the Burst Bucker Pro pickups, and it's going to be built a little bit different to the 1959 specs. So, question is, how did I do on this guitar? Well, I went through and I kind of priced things in, in some arbitrary way. Um, I should say scored things in an arbitrary way. Gave each of these models a score. The Les Paul Special got a score of 12. Studio E1, 13. 100 E1, 14. The classic Warren, we're jumping up to uh, 19. Studio at 20. Classic, 
19, standard a 20, and the 59 standard a 21. And a lot of those, you know, for, for me, the cheaper guitar was maybe a little bit better because I was looking for something used that I would just be playing, you know, very infrequently. So I scored um, this guitar as a 17 for my upgrade. I've got almost the look of the standard, except I have the bold on neck, which is something I was looking for. I've got the upgraded electronics, which you would get in the classic or the studio. And my total investment in this is about $220. So the question is, was this worth it? For me, I think it was worth it. Um, looking at what you'd have to do to jump up to some of these features. Kind of did an analysis of that. For pickups, jumping from those hot ceramic pickups to Allen Co. Pros, uh, for a new guitar, you'd have to pay $200 extra for that feature. Used market, it would be more like $50. For those um, individual control pots, new, you're, you're looking at about $50. Um, for a used guitar, you're looking at about $100. So that kind of, if you want to spend about $100 on a guitar, now all of a sudden you're bucking up in like the $250 range if you're looking for that feature, which is something... That's a little bit crazy that it's that high. The neck joint, it seems like if you want to get a set neck versus a bolt on neck, that's a difference of $200 new or about $50 used. The uh, binding, again, these are, you're going to see kind of a pattern here. To get the binding as a traditional Les Paul would have, you're going to have to pay another $200 new or $50 used. Um, inlays, $200 used, new or $50 used. The carved maple top versus mahogany. Again, we've got 200 new or $50 used. So when it comes to what you want to do with your guitar, I think your probably best bet would be a used studio, about $250 to $300. Again, this if if you're gonna get a a guitar you're not gonna you're gonna play infrequently um maybe you don't want to go that much maybe you find one of these uh used studios but i'm but it seems like the prices on those are kind of high i saw there's a studio e one right now on a local advertisement um online advertising platform and they're asking two hundred dollars for it but the people are always also asking $200 for a special too, which is ridiculous. So, and Les Paul 100s, I'm seeing those from $250 to $300. And again, you still have these hot classic pickups to go to that. So it's not a big, huge jump in price to go to that studio. Again, I've seen those anywhere from as low as $250 to $300. I've seen some come with a case, a hard shell case, for 300 to 350 And so uh, that, that's quite the deal right there. So the question is, was this worth it for my application? For me, I think it was worth it from a project standpoint and from what I got out of the guitar. That I was hoping I could just spend a hundred bucks, and which was a great deal, for a guitar with the, you know, the four tone controls and the carved top and everything. And I was excited about that. And also the project of trying to get the Mod Podge off that, there was kind of a fun aspect to it. But there was that fret fill that I had to do, which isn't too bad. And if someone wouldn't have glued the um, electronics or the, the knobs onto the potentiometers, which caused when I attempted to pull that out, it pulled the shaft right out of the potentiometer. Um, that was a difference of, you know, $70 right there. The pickups, you know, if you're going to, if you want to buy a Les Paul 100, um, like I have here and pay an extra 50 bucks to um, upgrade it with some used um, Alnico classics, you know, you're going to be looking at something like, let's see, $350, which is a hundred and Actually, that's going to be like $200 less than a studio. 
So that could be a good avenue for you if you're looking for a new guitar but want maybe the better pickups. Again, for me, was this worth it? If I would have been totally happy just having that $100 guitar function as I hoped it would. And again, then, you know, the Modge Podge and the Broken Pot and the Fret Fill kind of caused it to raise the price. But I still feel pretty comfortable with what I have here. I think it's something I could be proud of and something that I can enjoy playing. So anyway, thank you for watching this video series. Um, I'm, I'm happy to add this guitar to my collection. And it being a nicer guitar, I might actually just play the E-flat songs a little bit more frequently and maybe learn some new ones. So, again, thanks for watching. And if you have any questions or anything, just uh, post a comment and I'll try to answer them. Thank you.